You know, I could either make a video on Spyro Enter the Dragonfly or do something productive with my life. Spyro Enter the Dragonfly sees series developers Insomniac Games abandoning this franchise they have the less competent developers Check 6 Studios and Equinox Digital Entertainment take over. How do I know they're not competent? The game is featured on Wikipedia's worst games list, it doesn't take too much thinking to realise this one will be a stinker. Mind you, I haven't really played any previous Spyro games, so I'm not going to be like, Well, I absolutely hated what they did with this character, although I shouldn't be making fun of people that do that, because that's me with my favourite franchises. One thing to note is that the developers were forced to rush this, so they may not be as incompetent as thought, but we'll never know since they both closed down after this game. So, did Spyro bring the heat with this game, or did he leave me feeling burnt? Find out later in this video, after you listen to me scream angrily into the mic for a few seconds. Ah! The story starts with Ripto crashing the Grand Dragon Parade and casting a spell to capture the dragonflies that were meant to be assigned to the dragons, due to him hating dragons. Ripto's jaw moves like it was dislocated from someone punching it due to how stupid his plan is because his spell doesn't work, and the dragonflies are instead scattered around the world. He doesn't try to correct his mistake and just stays put in his final boss arena, as evident by a glitch that allows players to fight him two minutes after starting the game. Unbeknownst to me, Ripto was a dinosaur, not a dragon like I thought, and thinking this, I speculated that they were trying to go for a self-hatred internalised racism angle with the character. Then I remember this is a kid's game. Spyro's dragonfly, Sparks, is also scattered, but only from the ping as he had done before the party, and is found recovering just two steps away from the start. He's found so early for gameplay convenience, and Sparks joins Spyro for his worst adventure yet. The gameplay is exactly like any other Spyro game, but if you don't know what that entails, let me inform you. You start in a hub world and unlock new levels by capturing dragonflies. Their levels are the typical platformer affair, seeing you collect gems and defeating enemies all while flapping about. Their levels are quite varied, seeing you go from a tropical island to frozen temples to a thieves guild, as well as adding new obstacles and challenges in each different locale. Capturing dragonflies is interesting as you use a bubble breath to capture them, and when I say interesting, I mean it was interesting that the developers decided it was a good idea to include this frustrating system. These dragonflies are arseholes and fly away as soon as you try to capture them, which makes me wonder if the dragonflies are tired of being slaves to the dragons. Them flying from you makes for a very strange scene as Spyro flings himself around, spurting out bubbles as the camera swings more uncontrollably than a drunken wife beater attempting another assault. However, if you think about it too long, they don't make sense as a collectible, as they can easily fly from the level back home and there is no explanation if something else is keeping them there. Luckily, this is aimed towards children because I don't think I could take any other dragon seriously after they had bubbles escape their mouth. Every time you collect a dragonfly, you learn their name and they range from Jordan to Tashi Station. What I mean by that is they range from normal to weird, which is kind of like people's names these days. The best part is Sparrow says their name out loud, so you know the voice actor would have taken ages to record these due to him laughing at the stupid names. Fun fact, this is the first video where the main character has purple coloured skin, so you can't criticise me for not being diverse enough. Sparks acts as a vacuum to suck up nearby gems and also acts as Spyro's health indicator, changing colour the more hits Spyro has taken. To receive health, Spyro needs to kill animals and collect butterflies for Sparks to devour. He eats things twice his size in seconds, it's insane. Between Spyro's bubble breath and the fact that he can't fly very well, I'm starting to believe that Sparks is the one that poses a greater threat to Ripto. The yellow gems in-game can either be worth 10 or 25 gems, seeming like the rate for these gems fluctuates more than cryptocurrency. While I may rip on the bubble breath, the other elemental abilities Spyro gains add some creativity to the game as they are used to defeat various enemies and solve puzzles. With these varied abilities, the game encourages backtracking as areas within levels cannot be unlocked without later learnt skills. This is why the bubble breath stands out like a sore thumb, as its only use is to capture dragonflies and that doesn't have multi-purpose uses like the rest of the abilities. Getting skills requires the collection of a rune in a level and to present it to a dragon statue in the hub world. Due to how infrequent and early on these are, I wouldn't really call this a game mechanic. While I have been ripping the bubble breath a new arsehole better than the four men doing the quadruple anal penetration I watched just the other day, no power is as useless as the wing shield. Its purpose is to repel enemy projectiles and the one wizard enemy it works on isn't in the level you find it, rather a few levels down the line. Getting the projectile to return and hit the enemy is less accurate than me after a night out drinking, trying to urinate in my toilet. I forget to mention that, well, I didn't forget it, 
but it would be better structurally if I now bring up that dragonflies can also be collected via mini games found in the levels. While varied, most of them involve collecting items within a time limit and racing, with vehicle based mini games being a common occurrence. These vehicles are the worst in terms of controls, either being too clunky or too sensitive to easily complete the task at hand, almost as if none had steering compatible with dragon claws. Another type of mini game is the speedways, that sees Spyro miraculously being able to fly and comes in two types, time attack and race. Time Attack sees Spyro destroy all objects in the area before the time runs out and passing through rings. Race is as its name implies and has Spyro fly through rings against opponents doing multiple laps of the course. Swimming is another clunky affair, with Spyro not being able to use his breath and relying on his charge move to defeat enemies. The problem is, this could have been the perfect opportunity to advance the bubble breath to something other than a glorified dragonfly capture, due to Spyro blowing out bubbles in place of any selected ability. While the game can be pretty to look at, not everything runs smoothly under the hood of this engine like the time your mother took off her makeup in front of me. Sorry, I apologise. I would never stoop so low as to give your mum any time of day. Unfortunately, the frame rate stutters more than a stammerer. Stammerer? Stammerer? Unfortunately, the frame rate stutters more than a person with a stammer performing a public speech. There, nailed it. Large portions of the area pop in unexpectedly like a virgin entering the wrong hole on accident due to poor loading, and loading takes so long there's a loading screen for the loading screen. Luckily I didn't make this video in the early 2010s, or I would have had to include an inception joke right there. Most characters feel like they have ADHD due to them twitching around while staying in the same spot while talking to Spyro. It doesn't help that the lip syncing doesn't match up, making them look like a crackhead jittering their mouth around. some explosives but don't have any matches. My mama always told me that I should never play with matches. Anyway, maybe you can help me with that. Although most of these characters are animals without lips, so would this be classified as bad mouth syncing then? I went into this game expecting a multitude of glitches, but the only major one I seemed to find was during a mini game. With your electric bath, you needed to charge electric poles within a time limit, but the game acted as if I had already charged these, so I then had to wait out the time until I got another chance to play it again. Making a grand return is me making a mockery of the cover. It may look like Spyro is simply smiling slyly but gaze into his violet eye and see the image of Ripto poorly reflecting within. Honestly, the cover art designer probably got an image of Ripto from a screen cap of the game, making it more transparent before pulling it over Spyro's eye. Why are the two enemies grinning at each other? Are they in an interspecies relationship nobody knew about? The music was the most enjoyable part of the game with the tunes drowning out the frustrations I had with the gameplay as its soothing notes were calming me down. Fuck this gameplay! This is my jam. Fuck this gameplay. But this is my jam. Fuck the glitches, but I love these notes. Fuck the glitches, but I love these notes. The voice acting, however, sounds like the actors just came in for another check. With Sparrow even mispronouncing Dragonfly's names as an example of its sloppiness. With my world-renowned ability to see into the future, I sense that it wasn't a smart idea to complete this game 100%. I looked up the reward for doing so, not that I had already known that from doing research on this game prior, and in the final cutscene, Spyro winks at you. What a pitiful prize! Spyro, you're more of a tease than a girl with a premium snap that doesn't get naked. Overall, the game was too easy and I didn't so much as die once. The final boss, being the only boss, is a pushover, with the game ending without you feeling like you accomplished too much. In fact, you use every power you learned against Ripto in the fight except the bubble breath and the wing shield, further proving how useless both abilities are. As I played through this game, I began to warm up to it more and found I was dragging myself to play this game willingly more times than not. Sure, it had its problems, and I understand why people hate it, but compared to the other games I've looked at in this series, it barely scratches and sniffs the shit surface. Even with its short length, inconsistent frame rate and lengthy load times, I'd still consider this an average game with a few fun times to have. Maybe the game's shortness is why I enjoyed it more than I should've, because it never overstayed its welcome and didn't run long enough to devolve into terrible territory. Mind you, not being a Spyro fan may skew my view on this, but hey, who's gonna put me to the sword on that? Here is the list, updated as per usual, but I'd hope that my more positive outlook on this game made it obvious that this would be the best so far. Leave a comment complimenting me on how well I did with making this video. I need my ego fueled. Well, that's what you get for playing with your little sticks. <laughs>